away our leverage temptation. So as believers, we're works in progress. Every day we still have to choose to obey what the Holy Spirit shows us in God's Word or to give in to temptation and sin. And God doesn't want that. Notice he said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we grew up in Satan's kingdom. We learned how to behave and talk and think like him. But now God's taken us out. He wants all that thinking and behavior out and his thinking. So we can only do it by the help of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Now the priest, dressed in white linen, a sash of the covering colors, but the high priest had a blue jacket with pomegranates and bells, a woven neck fog, and a breastplate with 12 precious stones set in gold, each with a personal name of one of Jacob's sons. And on the shoulders, six and six, the 12 names in the order they were born. And the gold band sang holy to the Lord, because it's written every day he came here, had to carry Israel to represent them before God. And that in Hebrews we see Christ is our great high priest. So we know from the high priestly duties, every day he's representing us personally by name before the Father. Now the golden altar, God's vocation wood, covered with gold. Only the holy gold would come here, and a special mix of incense made a very sweet smell. Now notice in Revelation, Psalms, the Prophets, our worship, prayer, praise is like sweet-smelling incense to the Lord. So our response to everything He's done for us, but it also represents Messiah. Hebrews tells us He ever lives to intercede for us, so He's still standing in the gap. Now only on Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, which was one day a year, could the high priest enter the Holy of Holies? He did not wear this. See in Leviticus 16, it clearly says he wore pure white. So it's a picture of the Messiah who put aside all his glory and came humbly to do the Father's will. So he could take his pure blood to the heavenly tabernacle, but here the high priest first had to take a big shovel of hot coals, two handfuls of incense, and put incense inside so he didn't die. Then he took the blood of the bull, the most expensive sacrifice, for his sin and his sons, and sprinkled it on the ark. Then he could take the blood of the goat on behalf of Israel. All the leftover blood was sprinkled on all the holy items to purify everything. And then he laid his hand on the live goat, confessed the sin, the sin and bomb, the scapegoat, gave it to a man to release in the desert. So you'll notice, every day of the year, the blood covered sin. But only one day a year, the blood came to pay for the sin, cleanse from the sin, take away the sin. So Christ didn't come to cover. He once and for all time came to pay for the sin, cleanse from the sin, take away the sin. So he finished, completed Yom Kippur, except for the last part. The last part, the high priest had to come back here, wash, change to his glorious priestly garments, then he appeared in front of the people to finish Yom Kippur, all the work he had done on his own. So notice Christ did all the work on his own. He's back in the holy place in all his glory, but now he's sitting because he finished. The high priest didn't sit down. So the next time he physically comes to earth, will be in front of the people in all his glory because Revelation promises us every eye will see him. 